Welcome once again to Prevail's Compliance Corner. I am Orly. I am Noelle. Hey. Hi there, Hi. everyone. Um, and so today's uh, discussion is going to be about something we've talked about in a lot of different forms, but we're going to do a Compliance 101, which are th uh, it's, uh, something we thought we should do a little bit more of rather than just kind of these ethereal topics. We are going to do a Compliance 101 talk on SPRS. I feel like we should be on Sesame Street or something, you know. <laughs> Great letters are S P R N. -S. You should just you should get them like S P R. -S. Maybe you could do that. Wait, wait, S. I can't. Yeah. Well, I could do it in sign language. Okay. S I don't think that counts. R S. -S. Yes, it does. Let's go. S P R. -S. There you go. All right, it counts. <laughs> so this is compliance one one. So let's let's just start with some of the fundamentals. What does S P R S stand for? The Supplier Performance Risk System. You had to look that up. I did, yeah. Also, well, because also the other thing it's called, it's called SBRS or SPURS. Right. You, you can hear it either way. And yeah, I, I'll be honest, I knew what it was, but didn't know what the actual acronym stood for for like a year. That's, right, because <laughs> we just heard it referred to as SPURS, SIPPER. SBRS or, yeah, whatever. Right. Well, SIPPER is different, but yeah. Ah, yeah. right. Yeah. Your SPRS. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I figured that the best way to kind of, uh, focus today's conversation would be kind of to look at it from, based on the questions you get from a lot of the compliance calls you do and people you talk to. Okay. So the first one's kind of a basic question. You know, P when you mention SPRS, people ask you, what is SPRS? Which is, yeah, you would think, okay, kind of, kind of a fundamental thing. But the reason why we're having this one-on-one uh, talk is because it is a basic thing and it is really important that people get this straight. So SPRS, what is it? So, I mean, obviously it's the supplier performance risk system, yeah. but what does that really mean? Right? What does that so, mean? What, yeah. What does that actually mean for you as a contractor with the government, uh, specifically the DOD in this case? So um, whenever you actually get a contract and it states that you have to have an SPRS, which we're going to talk about in a second, you have to go into a system the SPRS system, it's an, a web-based system and it has hundred all the 110 controls from 800-171. So, which are the same ones that are in CMMC version two. You go into each one of those individual controls and it'll ask you a question. It Do, do you, as a company have, you know, control 3.1.1 fully implemented, partially implemented, planned, or you're, or just, it's not applicable or you're not, right. doing it, or there's nothing going on with it. So what is your status of implementation for whatever that control is or lack of status in some cases? And as you go through it, it starts out at a score of negative 203, which I still do not understand why it starts. I've never got a negative score in my life. <laughs> Especially 203, like why not 200? Why? Anyway. Okay, um, there were chemistry tests in high school that I didn't do so well on, mm -hmm. but I never got a negative score. See, well, look at, and I, I've, certainly not been the, the greatest when it comes to test taking. And I've never gotten a negative score either. So, so it starts out at a negative 203 before you fill out anything. And then as you fill things out, there's different levels, like there's different um, scores for each one of the individual controls. It's either a one, a three, or a five. And as let's say that you have one of the ones that has five and you say, yes, I have this fully implemented. Then you get that credit of like the plus five. So instead of 203, you would take five off of that and get to what, 198. And then it works on that you know, as you go. So it's very disconcerting for most people when they go into it. And if they actually do an honest representation of where they're at, a lot of times they will be in the negative. Right. Like just starting out with their, you know, I, I haven't done well, really. It's kind of like a of diet. Things. You know, you step on the scale and you realize, okay, I'm not quite where I want to be. Right. And then you say, but okay, at least we know where we are and we can exactly. start, start moving forward. And you make I, a place this going. This is like the most feminist take on CMMC. <laughs> it's like a diet. You step on the scale and you realize you weigh 200 pounds. Not good. Well, and it's, and it's definitely, it's definitely something that we don't want anybody to feel like it's a negative thing. Like, like you right. said, it's just feedback. That's all it is. It's just, you know where you're at now and you know that you need to be somewhere else and you're going to make a plan on how to get there. But it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with what you're doing right now. It just means that you need some help to get the rest of the way. Right. And a lot of the, a lot of the time, people will get that negative score 
and say, oh, well, you know, the government's going to get so mad at me because I'm negative, you know, 50, whatever. let's say, right. or whatever it is, you know, if I'm negative 50. I'm not going to get this contract. I'm not going to be able to save it. And they'll do something that they really, really shouldn't do, which is they'll oh. sort of like fudge it a little bit. There's some, some buffering that goes on on each of the controls. Like, well, this control, I like kind of have something sort of for that. Let's stop you there because we're going to go into that in a bit more in a moment. I just oh, yes. heard that fudge thing, but Indeed. So you've talked about, you know, what the SVR score is, right? Yes. You, um, it's a reflection of how well you're meeting the NIST 800-171 um, controls. And importantly, that it is uh, part of DFARS 7019. Did you say yep. that? Yeah. Yep. So I think I did. D but yeah, but let me, let me address that really let's, quickly. Let's re yeah. rewind the tape. <laughs> I'm not going to rewind the tape, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's something that ha DFAR 7019 says you have to fill out and Correct. that's going to become a final rule in December of this year. Yes. Um, and so, but how do you know, okay, so the second point we wanted to get here is how do you know that you have to fill out an SVRS and provide an, an SVRS? Point. Yeah. Like, like you just mentioned, a 7019 clause. So most likely if you have a contract with the government, you have a 7019 clause. Um, it's something you should double check. You, there's two things you should certainly, I mean, there's a lot of different things you should check in your contract, but two of the big ones are your 7019 clause, which is talking about SPURS and 7012, which is which is sort of in conjunction, which is talking about addressing this state 171. So 7012 tells you, you have to do the 100, you know, the 110 controls for NIST 800 171. 7019 says, and when you do them, you have to input them into this system so that the government can see where you're at. Right. Um, so go to Sam, download a copy of your contract and, uh, see if you have a 7012. Indeed. 7012 clause. So that's how you know. Um, so how do you, how do you get access to SPRS? Like how do you get it from your contracting off, uh, from the person who you got the contract from? Like if you're a sub and you have a prime, do you get it from them? What do you do? So you should be able to have a conversation with your government representative. If that's a core or a KO or whomever, they should be able, I mean, a lot of the times they will send you that information with the contract, but if they don't for some reason, or if you are a sub and you have a prime that maybe, you know, you're not getting the right kind of information, you need to have a conversation with the government representative, most likely the KO or the core, have a conversation with them and say, Hey, I need to put in my SPRS score or I need to update my SPRS score. Cause I know a lot of people probably don't want to say I need to put one in because then it's like, Oh, well, why didn't you have one before? Um, I need so, updated. <laughs> right. I need to update it is a perfectly reasonable thing to say. And then, um, you know, just, Hey, it's been, it's been a while. I need to update it. I don't remember or whatever. And then get that information from them. It's, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions and you're going to have to, you know, be able to log in. Uh, the tricky thing about SPRS is that only one person can have access to it at a company. At least that's how it was the last time I had to do it myself. So um, it's it's a little bit problematic. And it's usually like someone who is, you know, sort of the like the CEO level or the CIO level or some sort of senior management person at the contracting office or excuse me, the contracting company who will have that access. So it's right. not going to be probably the person who's doing the work it's likely going to be the person who's like at the top, you know, managing everybody. So that's something to keep in mind too. It can get a little confusing because, you know, I have certainly had to sit, you know, on like, on like a zoom call and like look through everything and tell my superior, like, okay, this one's this, this one's that. So just make that's sure that it, conversation. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a fun time. But yeah. like company bonding, you know, companies are always hey, there you go. bonding activities. Yeah. SBRS team building. I like it. Yeah, totally. I mean, what, who doesn't want a team build up about 110, eight, you know, 800, 171 controls? Who doesn't? I think nothing better. I can't either. Sounds wonderful. And the trip to Starbucks. Um, <laughs> so I think, um, you know, we talked about a, a little bit about this before, but let's just kind of double down on this because this is important and really um, goes into our, our next point, which is what exactly you are reporting. You are reporting your compliance with the NIST 800-171 controls, all 110 of those. Um, it's not like aspirational what you would like that number to be. Nope. It's not um, a wild guess. Nope. It, it is meant to be factual. Um, and, and factual for right now. Right. Not factual for like, 
oh, I have a plan I'm going to get done in three months and I know it's going to get done. So it's like it's already done. No, no, no. Like right now, where are you at? Be as honest, painfully honest with yourself as you can. And right. that is that is where a lot of people trip up is in that in that place of like that pie in the sky idea of like, well, you know, they have the best of intentions. Nobody means to lie on an SBRS score, at least I hope not. But it's just, it's easy to do when you're like, well, I'm gonna do this. So it's probably fine. Or this is right. like almost done. I can make it fully implemented and not partial. Like it's gonna be done in two weeks. Like it's, right. that's not an option. You have to be as honest as humanly possible about it. And the other thing too, to note about the SPRS is that there is actually a specific control talking about building an SSP. If you do not have an SSP created in some way, the SPRS score will not count any of the other items. So like, let's say that you, you know, you swear that you've got like 10 other ones done. You're not going to get any credit for those unless you can say factually that you have some level of an SSP created. So that's something to think about too. It's sort of like the do not pass go, do not collect you right. in a situation if you don't have some kind of SSP developed. And it could be something that's very bare bones, but then just put, you know, partially implemented or whatever you're comfortable saying. So that's something to remember too. And I, cause I've definitely spoken to people who didn't know that. So make sure that that's top. You have to have an SSP, a system security plan is an SSP. You have to have one in order to input anything into SBRS. Cannot stress this enough. All right. Um, and so that kind of leads us to our last point, which is there's kind of a shift and maybe we should have said this at the beginning, but there is a shift in the reporting of SPRS scores. And we talked about this a little bit last time when we spoke to Jill, um, our friend Jill Lawson, um, which is, you know, government, uh, the DOD is beginning to require the SPRS score um, in various ways. I mean, want to just kind of give the brief summary there? Yeah, definitely. So the SRS score has been, you know, required to input for years for most contracts uh, with the DOD, but nobody, you know, and it, it says things like, you know, you have 180 days to up, you know, to make improvements on your SRS score, which is six months and, you know, but there's never, or there's very rarely been a lot of follow-up on that. Meaning from the government side coming in six months later going, hey, did you, did you do this? Or a core going, hey, let me check this, you know, this doesn't look updated in the past six months. There hasn't been a whole lot of that. So what is now happening and what we sort of, you know, spoke with with Jill, you know, the, on one of our last compliance corners is that now contracting officers and contracting officer representatives are having to go into SPRS to see if you have a score listed there and then ask you for documentation to support that score before they will permit you to go through with a contract modification. Got now, it. for those of you who are in contracting, a contract modification happens for all kinds of stuff. It is a very commonplace thing. If you need to add an additional person to a contract, that's a contract modification. If you need to change, you know, how long the hours are for people working or authorize some overtime. I mean, literally just about any little tiny thing could be a contract. Buy pizza for the team. Contract there you go. Modification. Contract modification. You sneeze wrong. Contract modification. Like there's a lot of contract modifications that can happen. Now, you may be sitting there and be like, I'm not going to have any contract modifications. And maybe you won't. I mean, maybe you're one of the ones who doesn't. But for the most part, most people who are contracting with the government are going to have some kind of little thing that happens that they have to do a contract mod for. When that happens, that KO or that core is now required to go into the SBRS system and to look up your information specifically. Okay, here's your 110 controls. This is where you said you did this, that, and the other. And then they're going to ask you for basically sort of like a paper audit, if you will, they want right. to see, they want to see your system security plan, which we just talked about. And they want to double check like, okay, 3.1.1, it says you're fully implemented. This is how the SP, you know, the SSP supports that. Okay. Check. But if you've got 3.1.1 and it says fully implemented and they look at your SSP and it is very obvious that you don't, that's going to be a problem because that means that you have lied on your SPRS score and they are not going to be able to actually give you that contract modification. This is a big, big deal. This, this, could big be, deal. this could be a huge loss of not only revenue and obviously getting whatever modification done, but this is also a potential loss of credibility with the government. I mean, I don't know about you, but like, I don't necessarily want to hire somebody again who lied to me about something. Right. This right. <laughs> so it's something to really credibility issue. 
credibility issue definitely can be one of the problems. Yeah. Yep. Wow. All right. I think we've uh, given people enough to chew on with this um, Lions Corner 101, but it, it's an important topic. And uh, anyway, I uh, hope everyone who's listening to this enjoys it. Um, if you have any ideas or um, any uh, thoughts on topics you'd like to hear us cover, make sure you uh, put in the comments below. Um, it's going to be down there. Uh, so please do that. And um, we'll see you until next time. By the way, Noel, I noticed you're getting ready for Halloween there. I know. See? Yeah. yeah. The black, like the black turtleneck. You know, it's fall now. The black do you have a black hat to-, to go with that? I don't. You have the black hat to go with it. I'm yeah. telling you. Little All right. Black- I'll go look for it. Anyway, <laughs> I have the black cat, not the black hat. No, no, I don't have a black hat. No, that part I need to get. But you have the black cat. So then together we can make this work. (laughs) Thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Bye.